Welcome back everybody, I'm Big Mac Davis here, and this is my 100% walkthrough of Half-Life Blue Shift for the PC, played on the difficult difficulty. This is Chapter 4, Captive Freight. A very long chapter, as you see from the length of this video. Let's get to it. Alright, let's go to the next chapter. Now, these crates, I don't believe there's anything inside them. And so, now we can go up the ladder and out into the outside world. And up here, and down the street, there are some sandbag walls. I like to remain crouched as I go near the sandbag walls, with the shotgun ready, because of what's behind them. To the right, we have a turret. So just double barrel blast it with the shotgun, and also on the left side. Now once both turrets are dead, you're now free to walk around. And inside the back of this truck are some very nice to have goodies. You have to crouch jump inside the truck to get access to the grenades and the satchels. Now these satchels, we're going to hang on to them for right now, so don't use them. We'll use them for later on, and you'll see when. Now, this door can't be opened because of the broken control panel. So, we have to go back down the street. I wonder what was inside that door. Well, this sign says it was the south exit. Oh, we could have escaped Black Mesa permanently in freedom. But we have to go the other way, which is the train yard and the freight warehouse. Oh, train yard. Well, let's go. Press the control panel and go through the door. Oh boy, we have an abandoned vehicle and a dead guard with some armor and the Magnum, a very nice weapon that we will use in this chapter. Now go behind the car and open up the trunk. That's right, open up the trunk. You have to crouch jump inside the back of the trunk to get access to the items. And then we'll just continue on down the street. There are three Marines behind the door, and you have to be careful. There's no way to get inside. The control panel is locked. So we cannot kill these three Marines. Well, you maybe can kill one, but not all three of them. So we'll just go back to the car and to this area. And there's a padlock right here. You can use the crowbar on it, but if you want to go for a more damaging approach... Yes, Calhoun is very destructive. Hold down the Use Item key to open up the hatch right here, which will lead us down into the steam tunnels. Let's go down. I like to face away from the ladder as I go down, and when the ladder breaks, hold down the back button so as to not go across the sludge. Watch out for that head crab, and the second head crab on the left. This sludge, you want to hold down the back button because of this slippery sludge, and avoid the head crabs. The head crab on the left sometimes won't see you, so make sure he does, and then just kill him. High temperature steam pipes. Yeah, don't touch the pipes. They'll burn you. We enter into this larger room with a big door and another valve wheel. Let's go through the door. I like to strafe this corner because of this head crab. Shoot the head crab behind the steam. Now, to navigate this steam, I crouch down and hug the left wall as I go right in the middle of the steam, and then just hold down the valve wheel. And that will turn off the steam, allowing us access to continue on. Oh boy, the water pipes broke, and it flooded this room. So we have to go underwater and go to the door, 
with another valve wheel. So we'll turn it. Now, you want to be careful around the next corner. What I do is a bit risky, but it pays off in the end. This is what I do. I run out, let the first bull squid see me, then down the right corridor is a second bull squid. Bull squids don't like each other, and they will infight with each other. Well now, that one got anally raped. And then you can just take care of the winner. The winner usually is very damaged, but... Basically, handle this however you want. You can use grenades if you want to. Um, basically, just handle it however you can and however you want. That's what it comes down to. Now, down this corridor, you can fire at the barrel, the explosive barrel. It will blow up a head crab on the left side and injure one on the right side. So just fire at it once to kill it. There's nothing beyond the gate, so we'll just ride the elevator up. Now, up here at the top, kill the head crab on the right crate, and then just step in and step out again. Well, that head crab was very ambitious. Come here, you. Boy, that was a feisty little one. A feisty little one. Anyways, all of these guys are dead. Now, this vent grating, I shoot it. Which will drop out two head crabs, so I just kill them. And now, we can continue across the sludge and into the next section. Now have your shotgun ready for this teleporting vortigaunt, as well as two more on the right side. I just used the double barrel blast of the shotgun to kill them. And they're all dead. And you can blow up the barrel if you want to and also see what's inside the crate. Which, there's nothing. So, we'll just continue on. And it looks like someone was trying to do some maintenance work on the ladder with the live wire up there. So now we'll go beyond the ladder where we have another Vortigaunt. Now, there's something humorous you can do with this ladder. You can blow it up with a grenade if you want to. It's just something humorous you can do. Anyways, around the next corner, I shoot the head crab with the pistol from a distance. Because, um, once you cross this crack in the floor, some vortigaunts will teleport in. So I just go back and hide, and just let them come to me. And they're both dead, but there's one more Vortigaunt, and he's to the right side, so be wary of him. And everybody is now dead. So now there's two passageways we can take. The straight path with the dead head crab leads us to even more head crabs and a first aid station. But that area over there is completely optional. You can skip it. The area on the right side is mandatory with the electrical hazard. But, since I want to kill all the enemies, we're going to take the straight path. And behind the crates is a head crab. And around the left corner, you want to be careful of a Vortigaunt. And so, we'll just clean the streets, as it were, of these head crabs. And destroy this barrel for convenience sake. Now, the first aid station is behind these crates, so you have to bash them. And you can get health from there if you need to. But there's nothing much else we can do inside this room, so we'll just go and backtrack. Like I said, it was completely optional.
And so, now we'll go back and take the other path, which will take us to the electrical hazard, but be wary of the head crab behind the next crate. Now, at this hazard, just kill the head crab on the opposite side. There's also another head crab to the left over there, but we'll get to that once we cross the hazard. To get past this area, you have to crouch and enter inside this little space right here and keep going until you come to this debris right here and then fall off the left ledge and then wait for the blue electricity to be vacant and once it's vacant and not there you can just make a sprint right here and also kill the head crab on the left side do not forget about him now have your shotgun ready for the next right corner. You want to take care of that Vortigon as fast as you can. Around the left corner is an explosive barrel. What you want to do is blow up the barrel, but be ready for the teleporting in Vortigon as soon as the barrel is destroyed. So, yeah. We'll bash these crates for nothing of interest. Our next destination is through this ventilation shaft, but it's too high for us to reach. And we have some more 1950s technology here. Very cool. Now, go up to this big crate, hold down the use item key, and then move backward. That's how you pull crates out. And then just push it over to where you need it. You have to jump crouch onto the crate, and then on this crate you have to crouch jump into the ventilation shaft. Using our trusty flashlight, we'll go on ahead. Now, the path will split. On the left side, we have a head crab. And also on the left side is just a dead end, so we'll go and take the right path. On the left side, we have a vent grating. We can shoot a head crab through it. And if we continue going along the right path, we have this surprise. There's no way to avoid the damage from it, and there's nothing on the right side, so you may as well skip it if you don't want to kill the enemies. Bash through the grating, and continue on. Another head crab. There's also a head crab down inside this hole right here, so just toss a grenade. It's so fun. He splattered everywhere. Anyways, we'll drop down and continue to the next section. And we'll bash through the grating to gain access to some more crates. And also, another ladder. Well, fancy that. We'll push the barrel out of the way, and inside the next hallway, we'll turn left and go down the stairs to a dead security guard where we have some armor and some ammo. So grab everything that you need. And also, we have a gearbox. <laughs> That's so punny. Anyways, we'll go back up, take the right path, and go up some more stairs. And, oh boy, we have the military firing at somebody. So we'll carefully crouch walk up these stairs and we'll satchel their asses. That's so fun to do. And look, they dropped a new weapon, the machine gun, which will come in handy for this chapter. And they were firing at this poor scientist inside there. Now, about this main stairwell door, this was demonstrated by S. Dunigan, and it works really well. You want to push the crate in front of the door. Just do it. Just do it and don't ask questions. Anyways, the scientist behind the glass has a low voice when he speaks, so you may have to turn up the volume to hear him correctly. I appreciate your help, but I'm afraid those bastards did their damage already. <laughs> if you were trying to reach the freight yards in hope of escaping, then just forget about it. The military is rounding up everyone, and 
everything they can find, and either killing them or bringing them up here for questioning. A colleague and I came up with our own plan for escape, and we were on our way to one of the old prototype labs when we ran into them. But listen to me. If you still want to get out of here alive, your only hope may be to find my friend. <coughs> if you can get past the soldiers, find Dr. Rosenberg. With him, you may have a chance to get out of this place. Ah, poor scientist, he died. So, we need to find Dr. Rosenberg for an escape plan out of Black Mesa. Well, let's find Rosenberg. There's a med pack on the left side, and also you can bash the crates for another med pack if you need it. Now, on the right side are these lockers, and you can push open the center one for some magnum bullets. Now, here is where the crate comes in handy. When you exit out of this room, the door only opens halfway. There's a marine behind the door, but he can't open it all the way, allowing you to sneak shoot him. And he's now dead. What a wonderful tactic. Now, you can pull the crate out of the door's way and just go through the door. And now we'll turn right and then right again and bust our way through this plywood right here and into the secret elevator. Secret. Let's go down the elevator. Boy, from the sound of this elevator, it's like it hasn't been used in years. It must be old. Anyways, inside this room, there's not much to do. But if you climb up this ventilation shaft, you can get access to... There he is again, the Easter Egg Guy. Hello! Anyways, that's all to see in this room, so we'll go through the double doors. And we can try to open up this door, but it won't let us through. And there is an old HEV and first aid station. Those look to be like 1970s technology. So this place behind this door must be really, really old. Anyways, go inside the security room if you need two sets of armor. And we'll grab the ammo here. Definitely the ammo. That's why we came down here first. There's nothing else to do down here, so we'll ride the elevator back up. And, hint, hint, we will be back to this area. So don't worry, we will get to see all this old technology down here. Okay, and back up here, we'll just continue on to the right side and up these stairs to the next section. And then we'll go through the next door. And now we'll start to go up these stairs all the way until we get to the first floor, which is the storage room. And we'll get to that door shortly. But for right now, what we're going to do is crouch walk up these stairs and look up and you'll see a marine's gun sticking out. What I do is I throw a grenade to the left of him and to the right of him, in hopes of killing all three marines who are up there. And so, let's go investigate. And yep, all three marines are now dead, so use those two grenades to your advantage. The freight records door is locked. And... The yard manager door is also locked, so our only option is to go through the first floor storage room. And inside the storage room we have a lot of crates with a few med packs, so if you need the health, bash the crates. So basically, if you need the health, there it all is, right there. The second storage room, um, there's nothing inside these crates, but why am I bashing these crates? Well, because I love to bash crates. What else can I say? Yep, nothing inside them, but what's beyond the next door is very dangerous. I have my magnum ready, and I crouch walk out the door and look left, and kill the first marine. 
there's also some more marines to his left as well that you want to kill and make sure you back up from those machine gun grenades oh my gosh those things will incinerate your cojones basically if you're not careful and so once I'm done peeking out I let the marines come to me I know that's not much of a strategy but that's the best we can do here just let them come to you and they're all dead so now we'll go out to the street and we'll grab the ammo that the marines have dropped for us and over here it looks as if the scientists were trying to get to their vehicles to escape Black Mesa but the marines got here first and they killed them now this dumpster area what I do is I approach this area from the right side I crouch down by the way and I crouch towards the dumpster and then I just shoot the marine who doesn't know I'm down below simple as that and so now we'll jump on top of the dumpster on the tire stacks and then on the ledge and through the window and if we open up the stairs green door we come to the second floor so now the second floor door is unlocked we'll go through this door and just continue through and we'll go to the next section and so now we enter warehouse security so we'll grab the magnum bullets from on top of the dead security guards desk and if we need it we can bash the crates behind the desk for a med pack and also bash the padlock to gain access to some armor but I'm going to save this armor for after an upcoming battle and just grab the ammo that's in the security cage and so now we get to this door now if you want to you can use the magnum like you did last time but this time I'm going to use the machine gun grenades I run in let the marines see me and then hide in this corner and then just launch them I launch these until I have about two grenades left okay I have two grenades left so we'll use the magnum to finish off any stragglers if there are any stragglers I guess they're all dead perfect okay from the warehouse security we'll just make a caddy corner to the parcel receiving now parcel that's a fancy term for package basically all these packages in here are parcels let's see what the people outside Black Mesa are sending Black Mesa well it just seems like they're sending med packs and documents that's it there's not much else in here so we'll just leave apart from med packs and so now out here we'll bash the crates up on this upper ledge and also make sure to grab this satchel make sure also you have two satchels in total if not then you won't be able to do this awesome thing which you will see later on this awesome thing anyway grab what you need and also what's kind of humorous is you can break these soda crates and it will drop soda which you can grab for health if you need it which is kinda cool now inside this blue cart are some vortigaunts oh boy and we also have frozen vortigaunts I do not want the Emperor's prize damaged we will test it on Captain Solo er, I mean a vortigaunt I apologize for my bad impersonation but that's basically the gist of this frozen vortigaunts that will come back to life now this red car 
Is that Dr. Rosenberg? Are you Dr. Rosenberg? No, I'm afraid I'm not Dr. Rosenberg. Well, crap. Now we gotta go find him again. That's a bummer. Anyways, along this route, I like to crouch along the striped ledge here to the storage room sign. The door will open automatically when you approach it, and there are two marines inside that you can sneak shoot. And the second marine won't even know that the first marine is dead. Okay, so now what we're going to do is backtrack to the security cage and grab the armor. Okay, so now that we're fully stocked up, we can now go inside where the two marines were. And just bash these crates for some more ammo and health. And then we'll just go to the next section. Now, I switch to the Magnum for this upcoming section. I run in, let the Marines see me, and then hide in the left doorway, and just let the Marines come to me in this room. It's a lot easier than it seems because, um, the Marines will enter, and they won't see you, and then you fire at them, and they'll run back out because they're damaged. That's just the way they work. And also, yes, I know this tactic can be rather slow, it can be monotonous, and not be as heroic as going out guns blazing. But there's one thing I've learned about these upcoming train yard sections, and that is, if you can save your health in these upcoming train yard sections, by all means do so. By all means save your health whenever you can. Because in these upcoming train yard sections, they don't give you a lot of health. So it's necessary to save your health, and that's what I'm doing here. And because you're the last guy, I'm going to hunt you down like the vermin you are. And that's all the Marines dead. And so now we enter into this freight yard area. And on this upper platform, we can bash some crates for some health and some ammo. Now, this full set of armor comes in real handy later on, so remember where that is. Now, on the left side of this freight yard, over on the ground, are some more crates. And in the middle area here, you can bash these large crates, but there's nothing in them. Now, on the flatbed, we have some more crates, some rollers, and a red boxcar. Now, there are some stops that we have to destroy to get the rollers moving. And that's so fun to watch. And also, the second roller. And what's inside the red box car? Hello? Can anyone hear me? Is that Dr. Rosenberg at long last? Hello? I'm afraid I'm not Dr. Rosenberg. But you'll still help me, won't you? No! You're not Dr. Rosenberg! Anyways, this green crate can be bashed. And it will reveal a machine gun. Now when you man the machine gun, the door across the way will open up with four marines coming out. But the next thing I do is what most people might not do. What I do is I run to the right side of the door and go up the stairs. The door will open and four marines will come out and go to the flatbed and they won't see you. And then what you can do is go inside the tunnel from where they came and just proceed on. But I want to kill everybody, so I'll kill them. Now, when you fire a shot or launch a grenade, they will be woken up. 
And when they wake up, your goal is to go back to the green door and the room and use the room as your hold point as you take care of everybody. Now, there are a couple of things to note about the Marines. There are four initial Marines. And each time you kill a Marine, another one will take its place from that tunnel. Up to 12 Marines. But only four Marines can be on the screen at one time. And here comes a grenade. So, yeah, four Marines at any one time. But there are a total of 12 Marines, if that makes sense. Just basically handle this section however you can. You have to be quick. Grab these grenades, launch some more. Make sure you have at least some grenades to spare. Oh crap, I'm getting hit from the side. And that is never a good thing. Okay, I need some armor. I hope that's the last of them. Because I need armor. Whew. Oh, there's a marine. Maybe that's the last of them now. I hope so. I hope so. But anyways, once they're all dead, once all 12 Marines are dead, you can find the health packs and ammo around here if you need it. So, yeah. Now, about the machine gun. I mean, it's there and you can man it, but the problem with it is that you're fully exposed to all the Marines. That's the big problem with the machine gun. And what are you doing? You did nothing to help me, you stupid bastard. Just... just die. Just die. Thank you very much. Anyways, we're done with this freight yard section. Let's just move on down the tunnel. And we come to another tough area. Oh my gosh. Inside are a bunch of marines. And to the left is an armored tank that will shoot you if it sees you. So don't go to the left side just yet. What I do is I stay inside the tunnel and just pot shot the marines until they die. Now there is a reason I'm using the pistol. And that's because the pistol is a more accurate far range weapon believe it or not, than the machine gun. That's why I'm using the pistol. Peek out. Yeah, see, that, that tank wants me. It's mad as hell. Just basically kill all the marines in this section from the tunnel as best you can. And now it's time to kill the tank. What we're going to do to do this is we're going to run out to the left side and hide underneath the, the, um, the car here and just make sure all the marines are dead under the flatbed. Once all the marines are dead, we can now focus on the tank, which is right up there. Now, see these crates right here. Use these crates as your hold point as you fire on the top of the tank, which is the turret, to destroy this tank. And the tank is now completely destroyed. Congratulations. And now, to celebrate our victory, we can bash the crates over here for some health and ammo. Much needed health for me. And so, with the tank destroyed, we can go to the other side of the tank. And yeah, completely destroyed. Awesomeness. Now, in the center area, you can grab some health and the Marines' weapons, and you can go inside the back of the truck for the RPG and some rockets at long last, which, which we will use later on. 
Now, in front of the truck is this flatbed. To get onto it, you have to jump. You have to jump crouch onto the coupling. That's how you get up here. And look, there's a hole inside the blue box car. Let's squeeze inside for some magnum ammo. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is get onto the tank's flatbed. So how do we get these items on top of this flatbed? Well, you have to, again, jump crouch on top of the coupling. That's how you get these items. And I fell off. Anyways, that's about it for this section, so we can jump to the left side and go through the maintenance access door right here. Now, this high voltage area, there's nothing beyond there, no switch to pull, so we'll just move on, and we'll go to the next section. Now, around the next right corner, is a turret. I just use the double barrel blast of the shotgun to finish it off. And then I go down the tunnel to find this flatbed with some CO2 gas in tanks. Ho <laughs> ho! We're gonna have some fun with this CO2 gas. What we're going to do is go to the back of the flatbed and climb up the ladder. Now, what you're supposed to do is shoot the lid off each of the CO2 tanks, and the tanks will fly towards the door. Which, that's just so fun to do, I swear. Now, through this hole, there are four Marines, and, like I usually do, I stay behind and take them out from a distance. Just make sure they're far enough away so as to not shoot you, and you should be fine. Now, once all the Marines outside are dead, you're now free to run through the hole and out into this railroad yard. Complete! with a turntable that we need to turn 90 degrees in order to progress. Now, to the left of the turntable, we have a control booth. The turntable controls. We'll grab the armor if we need to. And then we'll flip this switch, which will turn the turntable 90 degrees, which is exactly what we want. And we'll also flip on the Bay 5 door, which will open the Bay 5 door, which is over here. But we'll get to that later on. For right now, what we have to do is bash open all of these crates to grab all of the health and ammo. Let's get busy. Now, this blue boxcar, yeah, there's nothing inside it, so don't worry about it. So, basically, bash everything and grab everything you need. Once you bash all the crates, you're now free to go around and grab the machine gun grenades that the Marines dropped for you. I forgot to mention that. Make sure you grab them all. And once you do that, you're now free to investigate the red box car inside Bay 5. Hello! I'm in here! Can anyone hear me? That must be Dr. Rosenberg. Let's go up the ladder at the back of the red box car and then push this button panel to push the red box car out of Bay 5. And this is just wonderful. 
because Dr. Rosenberg has an escape plan to get us out of Black Mesa. And that's just awesome. And so, behind this boxcar door is Dr. Rosenberg. Now, one curious fact about Dr. Rosenberg's voice actor. His name is John St. John, who also voiced Duke Nukem. So yeah, Duke Nukem's voice actor is right here. Now, I hope you saved up your two satchels, because you'll need them. You want to plant your first satchel right in front of the boxcar's door. Don't ask questions, just do it. You can plant your second satchel over on the opposite end of the turntable, up here, and press the secondary fire of the satchel to plant the satchel right here in the corner of the freight warehouse. Press the secondary fire to plant it. And only press the primary fire when I tell you to. And so now we'll go into the boxcar door and talk to Dr. Rosenberg. Yes, I'm Dr. Rosenberg. Although I'm not very proud to admit it, seen as though I'm partially responsible for all of this. How did you know my name? Oh, I see. Poor Harold. Yes, our plan was to get to one of the old prototype labs. It involved something that very few people in the facility are authorized to know about. The same technology that brought about this catastrophe could also be our only way out. You see, I was involved in the very early work on teleporter technology long before the Lambda Complex was even built. There may be enough equipment in the old lab to piece together a device that would allow us to teleport outside of the facility. As improbable as that may sound to someone like yourself. Of course, none of that does a whole lot of good while we're stuck in here. Hmm. Perhaps I could help boost you through that vent in the ceiling. If you're lucky, you might be able to take those soldiers by surprise. Let's try this. Now, once he does this crouch, let her rip. And you should be able to kill all of the marines who were by the satchels. Now jump on Rosenberg's hands and then his head, and then climb out. And make sure all the soldiers around you are dead. There are three of them, which, yes, they should. And so now we'll climb up out onto the boxcar's roof. And then we'll drop down and talk to Dr. Rosenberg again. All right. Now we'll need to head back to the area where you met Harold. The access to the old lab should still be there, but we may have to break through some of the newer construction to get to it. Okay, then. Let's get going. Yes, let's go. Okay. Now you have to talk to him to get him to follow you, and you have to make sure he is right behind you, because he can get stuck. Now, let's head over to where we planted the second satchel, right here, and go into the freight warehouse. And here we're at a stairwell, which means we have to climb it to the very top. To a place called Shipping Receiving. Now, at this sign, I like to leave Dr. Rosenberg here. All right. Let's stick together. Don't leave me here, Calhoun. We need to stick together. I like to leave him here because in the next room I don't want him to die to the Marines. I go through this door. Now, I break the glass right here, and there's a Marine behind it. I like to use the Magnum on him. Now, don't run down the hallway blindly hide behind the left post right here because one more marine will run inside this hallway and that's it that's all the marines they're all dead so now we can investigate the first marines room where you can break this crate for a health pack if you need it and now inside the second room there's nothing of interest but some books, and some chairs you can bash as well. But that's it. And so now we'll go back and get Dr. Rosenberg to follow us again. All right. 
He won't even know I'm here. Okay. Let's go down the hallway, and we can make a pit stop to get some more armor and ammo, and also this beverage machine if you want 1% health per can as well. Let's keep going. Freight records. We must be on floor number three. The area we couldn't access from before. It's a good thing we took care of the Marines from way earlier. Remember that on the third floor? It's a good thing we did that. And you have to make sure that Rosenberg is right behind you as you go down these stairs because sometimes he gets stuck on the landings. But we're now down at the basement, which is exactly where we want him to be. Let's stick together. We're almost there. Okay. It's just down here. And here we are. I see you've already found the elevator. Let's hurry then. We should have chosen the Lambda reactor for an escape, but the crew there is bent on fighting the creatures, with all their hopes set on someone named Freeman. Let those fools try and fight a battle they can't win. I just want to get out of here. I don't blame you, Rosenberg. I want to get the hell out of here, too. So, let's take this elevator down to the old labs. Okay, and just like before, if you need armor, there's armor in here, as well as any ammo that you may have left. So, now we have to go back and get Rosenberg to follow us again. Let's get going. And then he'll use the thumbprint ID. Well, I hope the old security system is still active. With any luck, my fingerprint ID is still valid and on file. All right, and enjoy the rest of this video. Dr. Rosenberg, thank God you made it. We've managed to piece together some of the larger equipment, but you'll need to oversee the rest of the construction. Excellent, Walter. Finish aligning the power cell matrix, and I'll see if I can get the system online in the main room. Now, there's no time to waste. Looks like the equipment is in better shape than I expected. Unfortunately, this older technology does not have the ability to target an Earth destination in its current state. You see, Mr. Calhoun, teleportation isn't as easy as going from point A to point B. We've discovered a strange border world that was somehow involved in the process, which kept us from accurately predicting where any given teleportation event would lead to back on Earth. Some of the more promising research on the matter led to a device that could be attached to the strange crystalline structures we found on this border world. Now, this device could then be used as a focal point and a relay to aid in the teleportation. Well, in theory, that is. We lost contact with the survey group shortly after the device was in place. We later discovered other methods of aiming the field, but all of the equipment in this lab uses the older technology. In order for any of us to get out of here alive, someone will have to go to the border world and activate the device. I'm afraid you're the only one who can do this, seeing as how everyone else will be needed to operate the equipment. We should be able to get you fairly close to where the survey team had set up, but I fear the likelihood of running into alien creatures is very high. Once you find the device, simply power it on and align the emitters until the signal reaches maximum strength. We'll reopen the teleporter for your return once we receive the signal, but you must hurry back, as we can only keep it open for a short amount of time. All right, I'm going to initiate the teleporter charging sequence now. Be ready, Mr. Calhoun. Once the field is open, it will become unstable very quickly. Simmons, can you hear me? 
It's ready. Teleporter! 